Thank you very much. Uh, first off, thanks so much for having us today. Uh, this presentation was originally planned for uh, late spring because we had a tremendous season. It, uh, it was our second year being part of the robotics team. Um, I'm assuming not too many people, they probably heard of the robotics team up at Highland. They, they probably don't have a, a you know, a, a real in-depth idea of what it's all about. But essentially, it's an after-school program to get students involved in working with technology, um, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering type topics um, at the high school level. Um, you know, if you remember, as I do when I was in high school, I remember learning about these concepts in math and science and physics but I don't really remember finding something cool or neat to do with these these topics. So this program really attracted me from a teaching teaching perspective to actually have students to do something with the skills that they learn. And the other part of it is for students that may not be necessarily um, interested in math or science yet, maybe to provide that spark for them to become interested. Uh, what I thought I'd do, just to start everything off, um, just to give you an idea of what the program is about, there, there is a uh, presentation that the U.S. First uh, Robotics website, which is who we're affiliated with, they have a little presentation. I'll start it. Um, I might stop it a little early as soon as you know we get things rolling, but from, from there on we'll have a presentation, have the students sort of give you an idea of what the robotics team has meant to them, and uh, more importantly, what your sponsorship has meant to us. So let's start it. You guys have 40 seconds left. No, 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 just keep pushing it. Oh my god. In science fiction, they are often cast as the enemy. Here, a team's fate lies in their balance. A competition teaming bright young minds with cutting edge technology. Robots are built to withstand virtually anything. Humans are not. In this arena, minor malfunctions can lead to major heartbreaks. Oh my god, our battery's so down. Months of work. Stop that, dead. This is not science fiction. This is not man versus machine. This is first. Every year, thousands of young minds compete at the FIRST Championship, the largest and most prestigious competition of its kind. FIRST, or for inspiration and recognition of science and technology, was founded by inventor Dean Kamen How are you? to inspire young people's interest and participation in science and technology. The problem is that so many kids grow up in an environment where by the time they're 10 or 12 years old, they think their options in the world are being in the NBA or being in Hollywood. That's their perspective of the world. It seemed to me that what we needed to do to get first going was to break the stereotypical mindset given to kids about what's important in our culture. First, challenges young people to think, create, and inspire. Working with professional engineers and other mentors, students design, build, and program robots for competition. It's transforming the way they think about science and engineering. Let these kids that had never met a scientist or a professional engineer see what these people do. Put those people and ideas in front of these kids, you'll change where they put their time and attention, and you'll change the outcome. You'll change what they'll be when they're 17. A few of these CEOs said, Dean, what are you going to do that'll make kids more passionate about science or engineering? I said, let's steal from the playbook of sports. Let's create a sporting event. In 1992, 28 teams competed in a small New Hampshire gymnasium. Off the field. To them. Today, the championship is known as the Super Bowl of Smarts. 
a culmination of the first robotics competition for high school students, the first Lego League for middle school students, and the first Vex Challenge. It's the labor. We put into it a few things that I think sports could learn from. Gracious professionalism, they work together. You help your opponent, you want to win, but you want to win a close match. We have a culture here that causes people to work together. More than 2,500 sponsors support FIRST. And over $8 million in scholarship opportunities are available. Over 40,000 volunteers donate time and talent. First advisor and MIT professor of mechanical engineering, Woody Flowers, knows FIRST is all about conquering a challenge. I think it turns out that humans like a really tough challenge. And I think FIRST has proven unambiguously that if you create an environment in which the right stuff is celebrated, people will do that. So these people get to work really hard, compete like crazy, but treat each other well in the process. It's a good thing. Larry Page, co-founder of Google, recognizes the power of FIRST as much as anyone. My dad actually smuggled me into a robotics conference when I was 12. He thought it was really important that you know, I would learn about robotics and technology and get to experience that. And I think FIRST has done that you know, on a tremendous scale. Kids getting first-hand experience with technology, with practicing engineers, and um, from my perspective, that's how you accomplish amazing things. 10 or 15 or 20 years from today, some kid in those stands will have cured Alzheimer's or AIDS or cancer or built an engine that doesn't pollute. Somebody sitting out there is going to win a Nobel Prize and they're going to be asked, what made you go down this road? The probability that one of them is going to do something spectacular that they would not have done without first is almost a guarantee. Look at these kids. They're, they're the future. We're part of it by helping them figure out what to do with their lives. Okay. By the way, this logo was designed by a student last year that, had, that has since graduated, and uh, I was very impressed by it. I'd like to mention that during our presentations. Um, okay, we already went through the introductions and the first video. Uh, our ne the next part of the presentation will be our student accounts. Uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, do our ro robot demonstration. And after the demonstration, I urge you uh, to actually uh, choose one of the students. Uh, most of them uh, are returning students. We have a couple of new members. But uh, to maybe speak with them one-on-one -on -one and ask them any, and, uh, any question you might have. Um, I'm just going to give a brief background about the, uh, the team. This is our second team. We're on our, our second season. We're on our third season. We're mainly uh, comprised of 15 to 25 students. Uh, what I like to stress is that uh, the team is uh, student-led. We try to break down uh, the overall team into sub-teams. For example, we'll have a mechanical team, an electrical team, a programming team, and we really try to you know, put, put uh, the ball in the court of the, of the student for them to learn and really experience what it, what it means to get you know, a, a piece of the puzzle uh, finished and combine that piece uh, with all the other team's pieces. I feel we work very well together and another thing I, I like to mention about our program is because we are a new program a lot of the students are already involved in other activities be it sports or music and uh, we do work well together in, in, in that the uh, students get to basically fill in the time where, where it's required for them uh, to be part of the team so I, I don't ever ask a student to give up an existing activity they usually just budget their time in order to be part of the robotics team. Okay, uh, our uh, student speakers are going to be Allie, Rob, and Lucas. And Allie, if you want to start us off. Hi, I'm Allie Kohlberg. I'm a senior at Highland High School. And last year was my first year in robotics. Um, and so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my perspective being a second year. Um, so our team, 
as I learned, was like we split it up into four parts, mechanical, electrical, furry, marketing. And um, I was on the mechanical sector. And um, we worked basically with like physical part of the robot, like bring on the chassis and like the collector and things like that. Electrical, they have all the circuits, obviously, and programming the brains. And, and our marketing team, um, they do things like well, that poster you see over there. So at our events, we can um, advertise our team and just get the word out about our team. Um, and especially like at the competition, that's really important because um, like we have to join up with other teams and create alliances. So having that communication is a good thing. And it's a good experience to have to be on that sector as well. Um, so it's a lot of work. Um, like there are a bunch of steps we have to go through that um, I found help us be successful. Um, first, like the planning, once we get the prompt, as you saw in the video, and then we like start doing sketches, drawings, um, just throwing ideas out there. Then we start creating a prototype, um, and then you just kind of pick apart the prototype, you know, guess and check, fixing all the problems, and there are a lot of problems. Um, so that was, that was fun. And another thing we focused on was like time management because you only have like a certain set amount of time to get your robot built and ready for ship date. So that was one of the key things that we always had to keep in mind. Okay, so during the build se season, it was pretty intense. Like like I said, described before, um, like as, as you can see in some of these pictures, like the first one they're working on, circuit board, um, and then the top right one, that's us all coming together, like working on an idea, just implementing it. Um, and the bottom one, we're, we're kind of doing research, um, trying to figure out how to improve our robot. Other teams will actually post videos of their robots and like give um, other groups ideas on how to improve their robot. So it's good that, to do research. Um, so, uh, knowledge, like what, what I gain from this and what I feel our team gains from this, um, at least with mechanical, I have gained a lot of problem solving skills. Like every day we'd come in and there'd be some little problem we'd have to fix. Um, and so that was interesting, just being able to take the problem and get through it and fix it. Um, and mechanical, like building skills, um, like, I learned what an Allen wrench was because I didn't know what that was at first. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, things like that. I definitely um, added some of my building skills. And I just felt like it gave a good pre-engineering foundation. Um, we were able to use programs like CAD programs, um, SolidWorks. So, I mean, some of my uh, teammates took a class with Mr. McKee. Um, and we learned how to use SolidWorks and stuff, and we're hoping to use that this year um, with our planning and with our prototype, so hopefully that'll help. And our mentors were so helpful, um, like Mr. Olson, and we had some other ones too that um, really had a lot of knowledge to offer, uh, and I was really thankful to them um, because we would see it one way and then they would give us ideas and we'd bounce ideas off of each other. and it, was really beneficial to the overall learning experience. And that's it for me. Okay, my name is Robert Winger. I, well, I'll go over that in a second. <coughs> uh, th th my PowerPoint is a spark that started my future, and you'll see why. About me, my name is Robert Winger. I'm a current senior at uh, Highland. I'm a very active student. Like I do a lot of things in school. I do like NHS and uh, science club, chess club, band, which is marching band and jazz band. I mean, I'm a very active student. I'm a member of the first team, which our team number is 2603. The Spark, um, I was a junior in high school. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was just one of those kids that was kind of like, go through school, do what they tell you to, take the hard classes, but didn't really know what I was going to do. So I was a good student and I liked math and science more than I liked the other areas of schooling. So I had no idea what, where or what to do for college and then my friends started bugging me and told me that I should come and join the robotics team. So 
I came and joined the robotics team and I started working with um, professional engineers and then I realized that this is my future and that engineering is what I want to do with the rest of my life so I owe a lot to this program. And I call robotics like Professor Robot, just a little joke. Um, the robotics team is an amazing teaching program. It teaches, I've got a list of things it teaches. The first one, time management, like with myself, I'm in a lot of clubs. And um, not only that, I'm taking four AP classes this year, so I've got a, a lot of homework as well. And then I've got to balance it out with building robots, so so got to make sure you get the good mix. I mean, you can't let my grades drop just because of robots, but don't want the team down. Um, technology skills, it teaches programming. Um, actually, I took a programming class uh, last year, and I used some of those skills to understand the code that our programmer wrote, so hopefully I'll do some programming this year. CAD, he said we took, some of us took a CAD class, so we're hoping to use CAD, so we don't have to spend as much time prototyping maybe to get some stuff down and maybe throw out some of the ideas that aren't going to work at all. Um, we use Office for things like this. Uh, our PowerPoints we do. We've got Publisher. Then we give out when we give out newsletters like at Open House and stuff. And then we have to use Word, obviously. Everyone has to use Word. Um, increase the mechanical knowledge. I learned how to take a power like a gearbox. I didn't even know what a gearbox really was. So I learned how to take apart a gearbox. Learned a lot of actually mechanical things. Um, electrical skills. Um, those are really useful. I mean, if I ever need to change something in my house, now I've learned electrical stuff, I know a lot more about circuits than I ever did. So now if um, there's an electrical problem in my house when I grow up, it's going to be hopefully easier for me to figure it out, as opposed to someone who doesn't know anything about uh, electric circuits. Problem solving skills, like Ali said, we have problems every single day, so ever problems come up, like with our robot, there's even still problems that <clears throat> just occur just because it's life and problems occur. So you have to figure out how to get around them and that's what robotics does. It helps us. Um, people skills and they're used in every career so it's an important thing. We work at, we're a really big team so it's we have to make sure that we come together and talk especially between the four different teams that are inside of our big team because if the four teams aren't talking then we have multiple robots being built at the same time and that causes a big problem. And I plan to mentor a robotics team when I'm in college since this uh, program has done so much for me. And that's it for me. All right. My name's Lucas Salmon. Um, I'm a junior this year, and this will be my third year with Highland Robotics. I was here when we started. Why I joined was I was a freshman looking to get involved, and I've always loved building things and solving problems. And I had an interest in technology. Now, after robotics and well, I'm going to continue in it this year, but I'd like to go into engineering in college. Um, my dream job would be building exoskeletons, which I think are just the coolest thing ever. And I attribute a lot of my interest in technology to robotics. Benefits, I won't bore you with these since Ali and Rob went over most of them, but a couple that I'd like to highlight is basically experience is your best teacher, and it reinforces a lot of the stuff we learn in school and allows for a constructive activity other than like a sports team, which I'm also very involved in. So it also helps us develop leadership skills and it's something that we get to look forward to at the end of school because they drag on some of those school days, they, they drag on and then it's, it's great to know it's great to know you get to go and uh, build something at the end of the day and actually do something productive. Um, last year, this is our team and it, we started getting leaders to develop. Our team started gaining more structure, as you can, if you saw in the other slides, we had a mechanical programming, like uh, marketing sector, just all that. We started getting more support and recognition, partially from the school. We were involved in a couple pep rallies, and from companies like yourself, um, financially, as you guys did, and through mentoring, which was Mr. Olson, which. Ms. Rolson's awesome. <laughs> and the community, which um, we started doing presentations at the middle school, trying to get some of the younger kids involved. We built on our first year experience, and we're starting to get more interest and involvement. Like Mr. Matthew said, this year we have probably twice as many new, new like, people interested in joining as we did last year, and about half of our team will be new students. 
And basically this is my favorite part is the competition, although I love building stuff and but I'm very like athletic. I go to sports competitions all the time and this was a similar atmosphere. It's very intense. There's music, there's mascots, there's loudspeakers. It's competitive yet it's professional, which really prepares students for a business atmosphere where you may not like the person next to you, but you gotta work with them. Not that I don't like any of these people, which I do. <laughs> yeah. But um, you won't find a more avid, enthusiastic group at any sporting event. And they're all, they're open to anyone, so any of you that want to come show up to one of our competitions, we would love to have you. Here are just a couple pictures, some mascots in the field. And basically, I just want to say thanks. Um, your contributions have made all of this possible. And I can't begin to express my gratitude along with all of ours on our team. Um, it's given me and other students an invaluable experience that we could not have gotten otherwise. And I'd like to encourage all of you to either come and mentor, like Mr. Olson, it's a lot of fun, or come to one of our competitions. And now we get a robot demonstration. Okay, before we head out to the demonstration, just to kind of put things in perspective, um, I, I did want to show one of our matches. Um, last year, uh, we had two competitions, one that was in uh, Cleveland at the Convocation Center and one that was out in Pittsburgh. And the Pittsburgh competition, out of the 27-28 teams, uh, we, had, we tied for second with the overall highest record. Essentially, if you remember from the video, you're paired up with two other teams. But every round, you're paired up with two other teams and uh, are challenged against three other teams. So by the time the competition is over, you get a chance to work with and work against each of the other uh, schools. Uh, so the way they mark you to get into the final tournament, uh, they, they rate you by how many wins and losses. And I believe we had a total of 10 wins and two losses last year. And this is just one of those matches uh, from last year in Pittsburgh. Now the video was taken from the stands. Looks as though about three moon rocks have successfully found their way into a trailer. And now the drivers take their control. And 3108 during the autonomous round actually took on a few more moon rocks than I expected. Vikings are now pinned on by the Red Alliance side, which is back, and they're on the Blue Alliance, and they're, and they're human players trying to drop those moon rocks in there while they're stuck there. Pinned up against the wall by the Red Alliance's Spartan Robotics. And 1367 just delivered an empty cell to their blue fueling station. Let's see if that comes in handy come the end of the match. And Team 3603, 2603, I'm sorry, 2603 now has an empty cell and is heading toward their fueling station, but they might run into their teammate, 1367, and they do. And they spin around, and now the fueling station's open, but they seem to have other things on their mind. The Vikings are still stuck there in the corner by the red fueling station. That's going to cost them, because that human player is still unloading all the new rocks he has in there. And that cell means we're entering the end game. And here come the Super Sales, and we got one in from the blue line. It's in the red trailer belonging to 440. That's worth 15 points. Don't that! Damn, that's all the time we have on this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, if it appears chaotic, it's because it is. It's just very <laughs> high intensity, fast pace, um, and the only way to truly get a feel for what these competitions are like to actually attend one. Uh, but the next best thing is to actually see uh, our robot in person so you get, you get an idea of what 
it was designed to do, now you get to see it actually uh, perform. So, every robot had a trailer attached, and you were to try to get as many as these, they were called moon rocks and empty cells and super cells, as many of these into the opposing uh, trailer. Now, when we started the season, we, we sort of broke everything up into phases. Our first phase was just to get a robot drivable. Uh, the next phase was to get some kind of shooting mechanism to shoot the um, moon rocks in the air at a specific distance. And then the third phase was to actually be able to pick them up off the ground and into uh, the shooting mechanism. And that's actually where Eric helped us out a lot, is through this uh, mechanism here that acts much like a pitching machine would, where the ball uh, rolls into you know, the area, and then it actually gets sucked up in through this PVC uh, apparatus. And then there's a little pneumatic flapper here that drops in to the rail, and then uh, the final piston does all the uh, pushing uh, at a touch of a button. And all of the controls and programming uh, they're all done you know, through a, uh, a student's work, and he had also built in some code for traction control. I'm not sure if you caught during the video, but the surface was a very slick surface, and these are pretty much like Teflon wheels where it's very, very slippery. And he had built in some code such that if it accelerated too fast, in other words, if it started uh, spinning or skidding, then he slowed down the output to the motors in order to keep a nice, um, even, uh, distribution of power. So at this point, I'm just going to simulate having a, a couple of balls on the ground here, and Corey's going to uh, go ahead and operate the machine.